Hello guys, I printed up this awesome Toon King army as you can see here that I would like to share with you and if you just want to see the end result of the army you can clip a bit further into the video and you will see how the miniatures ended up but if you want to see how you can make an army like this on your own then stick around and I'll share with you some of my experience during this journey Alright, so first off, I had to figure out which army I wanted to make. And for this, I actually used an old rulebook. In this I could see a small bit of all the armies and figure out which army I thought would be interesting. I went with the Tomb Kings. It's an awesome, awesome army. I actually had a Tomb King army some a while back, but I sold it on. I always regretted it and now it could be fun to make a new one. I even got the 8th edition uh, Tomb King army book, which I looked around in in order to find some inspiration for the army. I always found the Tomb Kings really fascinating, but I also must admit, I always sucked playing them. I can't really remember if I even had like one victory with them at all, but uh, yeah. That's probably more to do with me than the army. Anyways. I went online on the 9th Age forum and I tried to look up for some nice army list that I could print up, but I didn't really have any luck, so I kind of just wanted to print up a bit of everything. Also, a nice tip for you is that on the 9th Age forum there is a smart way for you to find alternative models and where to purchase them, uh, the STL files which I show right here. In order to print up my Tomb King army, I used a few different companies in order to find the miniatures that I wanted. First off, I used One Page Rules. They got this amazing line called the Mummified Undead. You can buy the sales files on my mini factory as you see here. You can buy them as a bundle or just the miniatures that you want to print up. The awesome thing about One Page Rules is that I was often able to print up their models as a combined file. This basically means that instead of printing like an arm and a leg, I could print the model in one go and I didn't have to glue the model all together afterwards, which often can be quite time consuming. Beside one page rules, I also use this company right here, which I can't pronounce the name of, and Lost Kingdom Miniature and Loot Studio. The program I used to slice the files was Cheeto Box. I only used an Acubix standard grey resin and I printed all the models on my Eligo Statue. I actually got some comments saying that I could fit my plates a bit more so I tried to doing that but I also just wanted to make sure that I didn't have too many fail prints and I actually only had two minor fail prints uh, printing this entire army which I was quite happy about. So let's just get printing and I'll show you some of the results. Here just show off some of the prints. As you can see here, uh, these are my Ushaptis, uh, which I printed up. I think they turned out really great. They are a bit fragile, I found out later on. Um, the arrowhead is like really thin, so you have to be careful when uh, removing the support. And here, one more example of what I told earlier with a combined file. This is the Sphinx a catapult and also a scorpion that I printed up. Really also turned out really great. In my latest video where I also printed up an army, I actually had to use a lot of other stuff in order to uh, get the models washed and uh, cured up but now uh, I bought a new washing cure from in cubic and as you can see here it, it really helps out the process makes it so much easier with these models I actually wanted to make a desert kind of look base uh, pretty standard two kings I know uh, anyway so I wanted to make up the base before applying the primer so therefore I had to make some work and glue all the models on the bases before I started priming so I found some small cork pieces in order to not make the base look that plain. Afterwards I started using filler as you can see here. It was actually my first time ever working with this filler and I found it quite hard to be honest. Uh, I could probably make it look way more like realistic sand uh, but I did my best and in the end I think it turned out okay. Uh, afterwards I used this crackle paint here uh, from Green Stuff World. 
Uh, I never used that before either. Normally I use the one from uh, Citadel. If I should be totally honest, I would definitely recommend using the one from Citadel. It's a bit more expensive, but this paint from Green Stuff, uh, I don't know if it's just me or maybe I did something wrong, but uh, after the paint craggled, that was really fine. And it just started peeling off, which were really annoying. Um, so yeah, after applying the craggle paint, I just uh, glue on the model and put on some small, uh, again, cork pieces here and there to uh, look like rocks. And then I basically just have to wait for the base to dry. I actually did all the models at once. And here you just have a small film of work in progress, some of the models before they dried. And here again, we see the models after the craggle paint and the filler dried. It looks really nice. I'm really pleased with that. And now let's get on to the spraying. Uh, in order to spray them, I use this Citadel Sandry Dust. And this is what the army looks like after I primed them. It's really starting to look like something, but I also want the bases to pop a bit more. And in order to doing that, I started to use Seraphim Sevia from Citadel. This is a quite simple process. You can't really put too much on there. So just get in there and just put uh, the shade all over. And when you're done and it's dried out, <clears throat> I put a mixture of sandry dust and your septic bone, mixed up the color, pretty much uh, radio one to one, and then just dry brushed it all over the base. With this step done, I pretty much just added some tufts here and there, and then the bases were done. And here's a small clip of what the army looks like now. Even though the bases were really, really simple and quick to make, I kind of feel happy with them. I feel they turned out great, and it looks like a bit rough desert terrain, so I'm happy with that. Before we move on to my small showcase of the models, I would love to share with you some of my thoughts on the project. I would definitely mention that printing up on this in general, you should really be aware that it can be quite fragile. This also counts for their bows and their spears, which have a tendency of breaking if you're not really careful when you remove the support. One way to get around this problem is uh, to use a lot of hot water when you are removing the support. It really helps and makes the process so much easier. Also. It's a really nice idea just to measure up like the scale of the models that you're printing up so you don't end up being disappointed. I printed up a lot of Ushaptis in their normal form as an example and I thought they were a bit too small so I ended up printing them in 110 or 120%. Anyway, I did the same with the Bone Giant. I printed it up a bit bigger than it uh, is in its normal form. Uh, I did this to make it look more realistic and fit the army. But so you don't make the same mistake as me, maybe take in, in your Cheeto box or whatever slicer program you're using, maybe take in some models that you know that have the right size for you and then just compare them to the models you're going to print. As I've mentioned earlier, I highly recommend that you print as combined files when you got the option for this. I probably use more time gluing the spearmen together than I made. Uh, then I used making the bases for the entire army. It was really a bit annoying, so I would definitely try to look for more combined files in the future in order to print armies like this. But I recommend printing an army like this in comparison to Games Workshop. The short answer to this is definitely yes. It's way cheaper and for me as an example, I already am Patreon to some of the companies that I use which means my main ex expense was actually just the resin that I used and I think I used around two bottles for this project or so and that's about 60 euros I think and you wouldn't really get that far uh, buying Games Workshop models uh, Tomb Kings. Anyways, let's move over to the showcase of the models. If you have any comments on how I can improve the quality of the models or maybe even an idea on the painting scheme I should do for these bad boys then feel free to post down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video.